Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. While Peter was still speaking. I love that line. While Peter was still speaking, God got to work. While he was still speaking, before he even finished his speech, y'all read Peter's speech? It's pretty good. It's a pretty good speech, but God did not need to wait for Peter to finish to get to work. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the work, the word. While he was still speaking. See, I think the thrust of this story is that God is way ahead of us. We call this book the Acts of the Apostles. But you know, I had a professor who once said, the main character of the Acts isn't really the apostles. It's not even like Peter and Paul specifically. The main character of the Acts of the Apostles is the Holy Spirit. And so much of the story of the Acts is a story of people playing catch-up. A story of people finally responding to how God is already working. God is way ahead of us. I mean, even Peter's speech, which we don't hear in today's excerpt, is itself a response to how God has already acted through the Holy Spirit in the life of Cornelius the centurion and his family. God is way ahead of Peter, way ahead of the apostles. God is already working, already doing what God wants to do. And our task is to pay attention and see if we can keep up with how God is already working, already loving. I think much the same idea is actually also on display in today's reading from the gospel according to John. We love God by keeping God's commandments. And Jesus' commandment is that we love one another. But the context for that commandment is that we love one another with a love that has already been shown to us. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. God's love comes first. Christ's love comes first. Because, again, God is way ahead of us. And so when we love, when we love in the way that Jesus tells us to, when we love others, we aren't doing something new. We are participating in something very old, something ancient, something that has been at work long before we started working. The love of God just poured onto us, and which empowers our love. So much of our work as Christians, so much of that work, is in accepting the work that God is already doing. We are called to serve, but so much of that work is in accepting the serving that God is already doing. We are called to love, but so much of that work is in abiding in the love that God is already showing. So much of the work is in accepting who God already is and has been, what God already is doing and has been doing. And even if we're called to be something as Christians, so much of that work of being is in simply accepting who we already are in God, accepting who God already is and has been for and in and through us, because God is way ahead of us. And we're just playing catch up. See, just like Peter and Paul 
and the other apostles aren't even really the main characters of the Acts of the Apostles. The truth is that I'm not even the main character of my own life or of this world. You are not the main character. We are not the main characters. God is the main character. And our lives in the love of God are bound up in our acceptance of what God is already doing in and through and for and around those lives. If only we could see it and know it and trust in it more fully. That who we are and what we do isn't really about who we are and what we do, but about who God is and what God does. That's good news. I think it takes a burden off of our shoulders, invites us into the possibility of a world where we are not responsible, but God is. It is God and not us who is the Savior, God and not us who is the fundamental lover, God and not us who is making all things well. And our invitation is to abide, to pay attention to participate in how God is already working, already acting, already loving, already here. It's a simple message, really, but I think it's perhaps the hardest one of all, because so often it's so hard to see how God is active, right? I don't know about you, but so much of the time I I feel like I really am alone, alone in what I'm doing, alone in how I am. I so often live my life as if I'm an island unto myself, cut off from the grace of God. I so often live my life as a functional atheist or nihilist. I think a lot of us do. I do my best as if uh, to accept the, the reality of the thing that I'm talking about, but the truth is I fall short all the time. So often I am just blind, maybe willfully, to the activity of God all around us. so unwilling, maybe even scared to accept that God is already acting, already loving, already doing the work in ways that I can't see necessarily or understand. So often, I want to make a big story out of myself for myself. I want to be the main character. I want to be who I am on my terms. But so much of who we are is actually bound up with who God is and what God has already done for us and in us. And again, if only we could see it. Some of you know that I'm a student of the writings of a monk named Thomas Merton, who lived in the 20th century. Thomas Merton spent most of his monastic career living cloistered in a Trappist community in the countryside of Kentucky, in the Abbey of Gethsemane. But on occasion, he was granted permission to go and visit the nearest city, Louisville. And on one of his visits to Louisville, he experienced something that we might call true sight. He had a vision a vision of the truth that is always already all around us, the truth of God's working in and for us. And it shook him. And he wrote about it in one of his books, Conjectures of a Guilty Bystander. This is something, a a segment of what he wrote. In Louisville, at the corner of Fourth and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all these people, that they were mine and I was theirs, that we could not be alien to one another even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of spurious self-isolation in a special world, the world of renunciation and supposed holiness. But the whole illusion of a separate holy existence is a dream. 
This sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. And I suppose my happiness could have taken the form in the words, thank God, thank God that I am like other humans, that I am only a person among others. To think that for 16 or 17 years I have been taking seriously this pure illusion that is implicit in so much of my own monastic thinking. It is a glorious destiny to be a member of the human race, though it is a race dedicated to many absurdities and one which makes many terrible mistakes. Yet, with all that, God himself gloried in becoming a member of the human race. A member of the human race. To think that such a commonplace realization should suddenly seem like the news that one holds the winning ticket in a cosmic sweepstake. I have the immense joy of being human, that is, a member of the race in which God himself became incarnate. As if the sorrows and stupidities of the human condition could overwhelm me now that I realize what we all are. And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people that they are all walking around shining like the sun. In that moment, I think Father Merton came into contact with the truth that is normally obscured to our spiritual sight. The truth of who we are, not because of who we are, but because of who God is, because of what God has already done. And in that moment, I think he caught up a little bit to the reality of love and grace and truth that was already flowing all around him and all around us. See, friends, the Holy Spirit has already been poured out. The love of God has already been shown. We are already shining, even if it doesn't seem like it, even if we don't see it. And my prayer, my simple prayer for this morning and for every morning of my life, I think, is that I may and we may slowly come to realize the truth of who we already are in God, the truth of what God is already doing in and around and through us. And that's a hard prayer to live out because, like I said, so often we feel alone, So often it seems like we are acting on our own. So often it feels like the work is ours, that we have to make things right, that the burden falls on our shoulders in a universe that is cold and unloving. But that isn't the truth. The truth is the truth of the stories we've heard today, that God has loved first, that God has acted first, and is still acting. I trust that God was already at work while you were getting ready for bed last night, already at work while you were brushing your teeth and putting on your clothes this morning, already at work while Marnus was still playing the prelude, while Justin was still straightening his stole, while I was still speaking. Please stand as you're able. Using the form found on page 358, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Christ's triumph over sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. That by his power, war and famine may cease in all the world, and the leaders of the nations be guided in paths of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. That the lives of our families and children would witness to his redeeming love and surpassing joy. Lord, in your mercy, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying. Remembering especially Alex, Austin, Betty, Bill, Drake, David B., Dominic, Dr. Lisa, Eleanor, Elizabeth, Heather, Janet, Janice, Janine, Judy, Ken, Marie, Mary, Michael, Nancy, Nicole, Nina, Sam, Steve, Tim, Tori, Walter, Wendy, and Quinn. Those in the armed forces, Logan, Parker, Peter, Mary Rose, and Morgan the people of the Holy Land, and any whom we name now, silently or aloud. Bless the men and women of the armed forces of the United States of America. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on that last day. Remembering especially Deidre DeWall, Ryan Selwood, Mark Hunterman, Dwight Patrick, and any others whom we now name silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace in our lives.
Please be seated. A warm welcome to all those of you who are with us here in the church, and a warm welcome to all those of you who are joining us online. Uh, just a word to our ushers, uh, to Bruce and to Kathy, and thank you so much for serving as our ushers. As soon as the children's church comes, you can usher them right in, right to the altar. Thank you. Uh, if you are new or visiting this morning at St. Barnabas, whether in person or online, we would love to get to know you. If you're here in the church, there's a pew card in front of you that you can jot down some information for, so there's a QR code on the back of your bulletin. If you're online, after the service, simply go back to the homepage and follow the instructions in the I'm New tab of the website. We'd love to be in touch with you. Sincere thanks to all those of you who are assisting us in worship this morning, our ushers, as I said, and our readers in Ultra Guild, a Carolyn, Aiden, and Dean, who are with me at the altar, and particularly to our acolytes, Harlan and Baden, by their second time up. Thank you, Harlan. Thank you, Baden. Thanks also to Marnus and the choir, uh, and to Ryan and Jewel and the whole Children's Church team who have been in the back. And thanks so much to Alice Duff for our coffee hour. Our coffee hour is quite something today, okay? Coffee hour is our 15-minute party, which follows this service immediately. And the Children's Church can come right in here, guys, if you want. Um, so our 15-minute party today is an extra special 15-minute party. There are two additional things going on. The first is that our director of finance, Lori Sodergreen, who's also a member of the parish, I'm glad to say, is secretly a master jewelry maker. And she has brought her wares here to the parish that you can do all of your last-minute Mother's Day shopping, okay? Uh, so there are two tables. One is for the kids, and all of the kids have been given money to buy gifts for their moms, okay? They're otherwise free to families, all right? So anyway, the kids have their table, and then there is an adult table. And from the adult table, a percentage of the proceeds will be donated to Mothers for Others, which is a ministry out of Second Congregational Church, and it is going to be made in mem not in memory. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's going to be made in honor of my wife, Jewel. <laughs> in honor of my wife, Jewel. So thank you so much to Lori uh, for that, and thanks to all of you. Second of all, at coffee hour, we're going to be celebrating... Val the Pug's fourth birthday. Val is our dog in charge, and the dog in charge had her fourth birthday. We're going to have a pug party for her during coffee hour. And I also understand it is Alicia Oryx's birthday. I'm waving at Alicia, perhaps on the stream. Please do say a prayer of thanksgiving for Alicia. After coffee hour at 1130, we're going to be back here in the church for Bible study and a close look at our scripture this morning with Aiden. And just a Two more notes about our life together in the coming weeks. The first is that we have two remaining fellowship gatherings on the books for this year as part of our year of friendship. Jesus told his disciples in the gospel lesson today, I no longer call you servants, but friends. And that is his word to all of us. And we've been trying to hone and to cherish our friendships with one another two more opportunities to do that. There's a cocktail party at the rectory for all comers this coming Saturday, May 11th. And then there's a special dinner party for parents and grands at the rectory during the next kids' movie night and pizza dinner, which is this coming Friday. So Friday is the kids' movie night and, uh, and uh, parents' dinner at the rectory. Saturday is the cocktail party for everyone else. Uh, it, it's very helpful to us. If you are SVP, you can call the office, be in touch with Alessandra, or there's been a link in the e-news. Jewel and I look forward to welcoming you and having a great time. Second note is that Aiden is coming up on his graduation from Berkeley Divinity School at Yale. It is not this coming weekend, but it is the weekend after that. Uh, and we have been so blessed by Aiden's presence with us this past year. Today, you did not know it before you heard it, but you know now after it. Today was because of our preaching schedule and Aiden's travel schedule. Today was Aiden's last sermon with us here at St. Barnabas. I will just say, if Thomas Merton said that every member of the human race wins the cosmic sweepstakes, we truly won the seminary sweepstakes <laughs> in having you as our seminarian this year, Aiden. Thank you. Aiden's official last Sunday will be May 26th, the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. We will have a special blessing for him on that Sunday. But there are two more opportunities to be a part of his Tuesday morning prayer group. That's this Tuesday, May 7th, and the following Tuesday, May 14th. And the group meets here at 9.30 in the morning on those Tuesdays here in the church. It is a, it is a great blessing to sit 
with Aiden and to learn how to pray in a deeper way. More to come, all the details for which can be found in your bulletin. And a word from Sam as the children's church comes in and goes to the altar, perhaps. Amen. Holy Communion follows. I would ask all of you to please hold in your prayers uh, those whose names were read during the prayers for the deceased. I might draw attention uh, to three of them. Uh, one of them is Dwight Patrick, who is a longtime member of our choir who has just recently died. And then the other two, the DeWall family and the Selwood family, are both families which are new to St. Barnabas, uh, both of whom had funerals in town in which I participated yesterday. Uh, the impact of this parish in ways seen and unseen is very, very great. And the impact of your prayers and the love of all of you who are in the pews ripples out into the town of Greenwich and beyond in a way for which I thank God. So please do hold all of them in your prayers and thank you for all of the wonderful and loving relationships, the way that you abide in love for this town and for the world. Thank you. Holy Communion, as I said, follows. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Barnabas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Using the form found on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and with all those for whom you would pray forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.